everyone, and welcome to Aussie Tech Heads, another episode. It's this week, it's episode 614. How are you going? It's uh, good to be back with you for another week of stories and uh, what's been going on in the, the, I don't know, our world anyway, is our interest in the tech world. We'll uh, give you some stories and uh, and we'll go through them and uh, yeah, have a bit of a chit-chat. We are brought to you by athwebhosting.com.au and if you want to drag and drop a website builder, free, pro, free, free for pro and business plans, uh, the servers are SSD drives, immediate activation, SSL certificates are available and domain registration, all the normal stuff that you get you know, from your host and all that sort of stuff, all that normal stuff. And also brought to you by startnewcompany.com.au. You can register your company fast, easy and direct with ASIC. So all you do is uh, search for an available company name, punch it in, punch all your details in and uh, in about 10 minutes you'll get your company registration certificate and all your constitution and other minutes and shareholder certificates all in your email box and walk out your front door ready to go. So that's good. All right, uh, we are on the Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads and youtube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads. So it's, uh, yeah, thanks for joining us wherever you may be. Uh, don't forget the Aussie Mac Zone and My Tech Opinion are the other shows you must listen to and also other shows that go around on the aussietechradio.com. So that's uh, go for in, go to that address there if you want some instructions on how to listen to the radio, the tech radio. Uh, what it is is it's a wall to wall, twenty four seven, just repeating. Every week, uh, new episodes go up. So there, you know, if you ca- you might catch the odd repeat if you listen to it full on. But other than that, tune in whenever you have a down moment, and uh, yeah, sure, sure to brighten your day. Uh, just get on the tune in tune in uh, app across platform. So good stuff. All right, where are we going to start? Let's start by saying hello to the co-host tonight. Only one this week, and it's Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, uh, how you going, Glenn? Not bad. How's your week been? Uh, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Oh, that's good. What you anything? Anything exciting? Any uh, uh, events? Uh, no events happening this week, but I got my phone finally. What's oh? What sort of phone? Oh, your little Xiaomi? No, I didn't end up getting the Xiaomi. I ended up getting the Kubot Power. Oh, well, how's that go? All right. That is pretty good. I'm liking it. It's got uh, six gigs of RAM, um, octa-core processor, um, 4,000 uh, milliamp batteries. So right. I'm, I'm liking it. It's good. One thing I don't like about it, though, it's running Android 8.1. And um, I'm not used to seeing Android 8.1 because I don't, in my other phone, I only had Android 6. And, and it's the, the raw Android, no other add-ons or anything like that. Right. And, and it's to me, it looks like bits and pieces are missing. It's either that or I can't find them. Like, for example, I can't find the, you know, when you pull down the menu, there's yeah. no sound or audio settings. Oh, yes. The menu to get it. Well, I've got the same... One, I think I'm on the Android 8.1, but yeah, to get the audio, yeah, it is a bit of a fumble. I've got to you just push one of the audio buttons, the ring volume comes up, there's an arrow, and then you pull it down. It is a bit of a fumble, but uh, I don't know. What do you do? That's okay, it. so it's not just me, it's everybody then. It's got the same problem. Sounds like it. <laughs> me and you. <laughs> we'll go for everybody. That's 100% just here. So, uh, yep, yeah, that's it. But that's the only way I can I can work it out as well. Um, yeah, but anyway, you can put a probably put one of those. What do they call it? Those overlay things on them. I don't know. You download them. I'm, you, I made mine look like an apple once. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, the launcher. Got yeah, launcher. launcher. That's the one. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, launcher. You probably yeah. do something like that. Get it a bit easier, but I don't know. Yeah, so it goes all right for you. Yes, I'm quite happy. The battery life is very good. It says it's um, it goes for two days, and it does go for two days. Right. I mean, on the on the I'm not a heavy user by any means. You know, I don't sit there and watch movies and play games all day. Yeah. But for the things that I do do, um, and that is you check your Facebook and your Instagram and your, and your emails and whatever else you do, um, I stream Aussie Tech Head podcasts, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it does it very well and without a problem. Oh, nice. And uh, what, what brand was it again? It's called Qbot. You'll find that in the show notes that I've got right at the very bottom. There's a link if you want to put that up for the listeners. All right, hang on. I'll find the the link. Qbot sounds like an arcade game. Here we go. The Qbot Power. Mm, copy that and put that over here like this. It's all nice and entertaining, isn't it? 
<laughs> yeah, and, and the good thing about this phone, I mean, it's only $279 or nearly $280. I mean, you get a lot of phone for that price. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah, that's not bad. So 280 bucks. Looks all yeah, right. 100, 128 gigabytes of uh, storage on it as well. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's pretty good. 8.1, 6 gig plus 128 gig. Yeah, right. A Samsung 20 meg lens. Yeah, that looks all right, Joe. Well, you'd have to give it, let us know how it goes after a little while. And it doesn't have the notch in it either. Oh, no, not. It's just got a, it's just, uh, well, it's, it's just a, flat across the top. Yeah, right. Like a, like a phone should be. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's got a car coming out of it. That's all right. Do you get the yeah. car with it? Yeah, good. All right, good stuff. Um, yeah, so what, what did you have a story about that? Or we, or that was it? Um, I don't actually have a story about it. All. I just wanted to tell the listeners that you know, you don't have to spend a thousand dollars to get a great phone. I mean, mm. sure, this one is not top of the line material, but I've only had it for about a week and it's very good so far. You know, I, I can't fault it apart from the fact that it takes a, a hard time to try and get the um, you know, the menu up for the sound. Yes. And the other thing I noticed is is your um is your Xiaomi got issues with uh, the lock screen? It's a bit difficult to run the lock screen on yours as well. So like what way? In what way is it difficult? Like what do you mean? Well, grabbing notifications coming up on the lock screen. Oh like, yeah. It doesn't seem to work properly. And now I'm not sure whether it's the security they've built into the, the operating system or whether it's something or it just doesn't seem to work properly. Yeah, I had to uh, get a, a launcher or some add-ons and because that's what made it made me think, you know, I guess this is why at the end of the day, the phones might be, say, 200 or whatever. What was mine? About 300. But, like, you know, when you put it against an Apple, the Apple, yeah, you get it out of the box and it does just work pretty much. You know, it's got all the notifications bobbing up here and there and they're all sliding down and whiz-bang and volume controls where you want them and all this sort of stuff. But, uh, and, yeah, you just I just sit down and think, well, you know, it's like you get an empty phone and you've just got to download all the apps to make it how you want it, uh, if you know what I mean. But I thought, well, am I trying to make it like how my Apple was? But, um, yeah, but yeah, I know what you mean. It's Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, you shouldn't have to go, I mean, being Android 8.1 Oreo, you shouldn't have to go down, download a, a notifications app, for example. I yeah. Mean, it should be built in. Well, that's uh, yeah, that's right. That's what I was finding, and and even so, down to the you can get the little, uh, you know, on the iPhones or whatever. You get the, if you got five messages, uh, you get a little number five on the message icon, you know, and it'll tell you how many messages you've got or emails or whatever. Well, I missed those, so I downloaded an app for those, and I just thought, well, that should be right. Uh, and I wanted the SMS to reoccur the beep because sometimes you wouldn't hear the first one. And I wasn't hearing my messages, so I had to download an app to make it beep every minute for ten minutes until oh, unless I answered it. So um, yeah, there's a couple of things like that. But yeah, you get used to it, I, I suppose, Joe. Yeah, look, the, I, I just was so excited that I was getting an Oreo, you know, Android eight point one, thinking, wow, I've got the latest operating system. It's going to have all the latest features. So, look, I got to tell you, I was a little bit disappointed because my old phone running Android six. Um, came pretty much standard out of the box. Mm. Sure, I ran my own launcher on it to give it a bit more personalized touch. Mm. Uh, but I don't seem to have this Android 8.1 giving me what I thought I was going to get. Well, maybe. What was your last phone? What model number was it? Well, what, what brand? It was an old LG G3, mm. um, but it was running Android 6. And I had, um, but even the stock, um, the, I, I guess. LG may put their own launcher right. and everything on it. I think that's the secret. That's the secret with those brands is that the Samsung and everything, everything comes sort of with the with the brand name. But another thing that as uh, that I was uh, looking at was you know how with the Apple you get the headphones that you can turn the volume up and down and and all that sort of stuff, pause and whatever, with the little switch on the side of the headphones. I've got some here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, can you do that on the Android? Yeah, because, definitely. Because I, I can plug these into the Android phone. It will only pause and unpause. It won't do volume up and down. And I thought, oh, that, okay. I, yeah. I, I guess I guess it depends how the plugs in, um, set up. I mean, the, the headphone socket's got to have that feature built into it. Well, I guess so. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and it's got the it's got the three 
rings in the, in the in the socket. So mm. therefore, you got the left, right, and and the control. and the control of something. Yeah, well, that's right. And I just thought, well, okay, well, fair enough. I'll get. Can you get some headphones from Android compatible headphones that do the same? But uh, I don't know. I can't find. Oh, maybe Blue, maybe Bluetooth head. Um, Headphones yeah. Will be fine. yeah, well, that's probably the way you got to go, isn't it? Bluetooth or some sort of wireless jobbies. But anyway, well, the, yeah, sorry. the other thing I liked about this phone is it has got a headphone jack as well. So there you go. Yeah, well, that's good. That's good. Uh, but talking about while we're on the mobile phones, you got you do have a story about mobile phones. Um, do you want to go on with that? Uh, mobile phones, yes. Now, apparently, mobile phones are going to be banned in New South Wales primary schools as of next year. Um, the primary schools will enforce a mobile phone ban from next year um, to reduce bullying and online bullying and uh, unnecessary distractions in the classroom. Mm. Well, I think that's fair enough, isn't it? I thought when yeah. I... Yeah, you disagree? No, no, I, I, I sort of like the idea of that. I mean, people are going to school these days and they've got their phones with them and, you know, they sort of sneak, you know, messages under the table and they get distracted and so forth. Yeah. Um, well, when I first heard this story, yeah, I'll just squeeze that in like that. Yeah, when I first heard this story, yeah, I, I thought, oh, yeah, okay, maybe a bit tough, blah, 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 until then when they recapped and said that it was primary school, I went, oh, well, that's fair enough. I don't think you want um, uh, phones in primary schools. I think that's fair enough. Yeah. So. They've also got an option now. They're saying that high schools have got the choice to opt in if they want to do the ban. Right. Um, but they have to decide... Um, how they're going to use the phones. I mean, apparently the Minister uh, for Education, uh, Robert Stokes, said that many high schools already have this sort of uh, strategy in place um, for mobile phones. Mm. So, yeah. And uh, even some students themselves, apparently they're saying that the mobile phones were causing a distraction in class as well. Yeah, I think like, I think if you take a phone to, yeah, yeah, okay, I'm all good with primary schools. High schools, maybe you can take a phone. They've got to be off. There's no interruptions. You, you're not allowed to pass a note, so you're not allowed to read a phone. So, you know, otherwise you're detention time. But uh, Yeah, I mean, I guess there's no real reason why, for kids to have phones at school. No. Um, there's, um, you know, like the old days, if the parent needed to get in contact with the, with the kid, you know, with their kids at school, they rang the school, the school sends their little... What was they called? The little runners? What were they called back then? The... <laughs> no. You remember? That? You remember they used to have little runners sitting out. I mean, I know at my school, uh, when I, I used to be a little runner boy, you used to sit there outside the office and can you go and take a message to so and so and can you go and do this and can you go and pick this up? Is that why you got a C on your maths report? You were too busy running. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what do you mean you were just yeah, sitting there? I, I, that's that's what they used to do back then, you know. What you just sat there and waiting for a, waiting for a message. How did that work? Everybody in the school, um, all the kids in the school had days where they had um, office duty or so they called os- oh, office. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. So they sat down. Um, uh, Chris calls them s- uh, school monitors. I think that's what they call oh, them. Oh, okay. Yep. And yep. and they were, they were sitting outside the office. Um, they were sitting outside the office. And, and if they had to run a message across to a teacher or something, then they... Um, yeah. They, need to go there, you know, drop off this piece of paper or can you go and pick up this book for this person and, and whatever mm. else. And they were basically just little runners for the school, for the office. I, I remember I used to have to go and ring the bell. We didn't have electronic bells. We had the old... That's right. Oh, That's right. This. So that was another job they had to do. They had to ring the door, but they had to ring the bell. Yep. Put the flag up and down, all that sort of stuff. So, uh, I don't know about the flag. No, I didn't. never had to do the flag. Yeah, I, I, think did. Pre- I think that was a prefect's job to do the flag. Could have been. I wasn't a the prefect. Prefects, the prefects, you know, the, the people in the... We used, to, we used to have to run our own tuck shop. We had the kids in charge of the tuck shop. <laughs> Only year sixes. And you'd be always looking around going, did you buy that? Where'd that come from? <laughs> I think they made a big loss. Uh, yeah, one day a week we had hot food when the ladies came in. But the other days it was just, uh, yeah, chocolates for your mates. <laughs> Everyone had to pay. Everyone else had to pay. Um, yeah, so, so the idea of the phones in the classroom, you know, it's it's a good idea not to have them there. They're a distraction. Um, I mean, I know people in the office are using them and they're always looking at their phone. People at home, they've got friends or family around, they're always looking at their phone. Mm. So it, it's not a bad thing. I mean, sure, let them have it during lunch breaks and so forth, but they've got to get back into their bags. But I think they're going to remove them altogether. Like, 
I don't think you can bring them at all. But even so, like even you know, at, even at lunchtime, like my little girl, she's just started year seven this year. Well, I've just finished, and uh, she has just kids just sit there like this, head down all day in their phone at lunchtime, like. Well, a lot of them, you know, that's no good. No good, but anyway, that's what happens. Um, all right, let's move on. Look, I've got, uh, I don't know, if, if you would had have been watching the Facebook feed through the week, you would have seen that we are, uh, the first episode of Aussie Tech Heads has been entered into the, somewhere it says here, I don't know what, I, I don't know what the, the word, the acronym stands for now, the National, something or other, the National <laughs> I don't know, ended into something, that's good, isn't it? The NFSA, let me get the webpage up and we'll have a look. It can be searched at the nfsa.gov.au. That's something, National Film and Sound Archive, that's what it is. So there you go, episode one, they thought it was, uh, it was um, good enough <laughs> to, be put well, in, cool, to be put in some archive. I'm going to try and get it up on this website. I had a link, what threw me just then was I had a link and it didn't work. It gave me this this page here. But, oh, there we go. Can you see that? Episode one. But the bad thing is you've got to pay for it. You can't listen to it off the site. You've got to pay for it, like 80 bucks or something to retrieve it. So um, if you want to listen to it, just send me an email. <laughs> I'll send it to you for free. It, uh, it's on the, but it's still on the uh, on the Google there somewhere. I'm sure you can find it. But, yeah, so there you go. It's, uh, it's, it's etched there for eternity uh, or until the National Film Archive blows up. So, yeah, pretty cool. It's good. That is pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, um, all right, so let's get on with something else. The MBN, like the MBN saga around the place. Well, I think I looked it up the other day. I'm due for MBN Connection on the 18th of February. So it's getting close, getting very close. But MBN has revealed that 58% of its HFC footprint remains unserviceable. And this is after, even after seven months after the freeze that happened last year. Uh, so if you if you remember, the HFC was getting rolled out. It didn't work, so they put a stop to all new sales, and they had to rejig all the pits or rejig the whole network or whatever they were doing to make it work. Uh, the network, the MBN said that as of November 16, there was oh, about 1.2 million premises in the HFC footprint whose connections were classed as unserviceable. So the MBN froze the HFC sales between December 11 last year and April this year. Uh, so it could remediate parts of the network and improve performance. So it's just um, just a mess. It's, it's, it's just a complete mess. But, uh, and it goes on. I'll just work into another story here because it's about the same, the same thing, MBN. The MBN technicians, well, there was a couple of months ago, we had a story where I think it might have been something like the ACCC. They said, okay, MBN, if you start missing your calls, like your appointments with people, you're going to get charged 25 bucks. Well, they've been missing a few appointments. So on average, the MBN has been missing 430 appointments a day. All right, so that's, oh, that's uh, a fair bit, isn't it? That is a fair bit. The company revealed that while 91% of the appointments during the last financial year were not missed, the total number of missed technician appointments for the period of 1st of July 17 to 30th of June 18 missed the number was 157,268. So yeah, it's a lot. Even though it's, it's you know it's only say nine percent, it's still it's a lot of people, especially if you're one of them. Uh, so the MBN class a missed appointment as where a technician has failed to attend the premises within the agreed appointment window, and so that so that sort of makes it even sound worse because you know how the the appointment window was either nine to twelve or twelve to four, you know, so they can't get there in that in the four hours. I think they. Yeah, I don't know. I've got issues with them anyway. The number. What about, what about all the people that stay home from work to do, you know, like wait for these guys? I mean, they don't get any compensation. What's happening about that? Yeah, well, that's what happens. That's the problem. You sit at home all day waiting for these people, and nothing turns up. Then you got to, then you wasted that day. You've lost productivity. You got to go and then do this another day and hope they turn up. But the number of missed appointments provides some idea. Uh, yeah, so they're paying 25 bucks for every one of their no-shows or connection or their, their, their no-shows or fault. On missed appointments, the MBN could be up for about $4 million. So that's uh, huge money. Well, probably not for them. It's not really, is it? When it, when the whole thing's costing, I don't know, $40 billion plus. But anyway, $4 million, though. It's costing double what it should cost anyway. Yeah. Look, they should be probably charged. They should be fined more. And the compensation for people should be more than 25 bucks as well. Like, who cares? Not even half a case of beer these days. 
So, you know, probably if I had 25 bucks, I'd go and buy a case of beer and just drink it in front of him when he did turn up. But yeah, so MBN is no good. No good. So, But I can't wait till we get it. So, uh, But look, things on the Facebook Live, as you know, we do stream out to Facebook Live most weeks. And this week when Jordan's not here, he normally does the stream. But it seems to be going okay. My little 5 meg up seems to be handling it all right so far. There hasn't been any complaints on the on the feed. I'm just quickly trying to go through them. And, uh, yeah, no, it seems, seems to be working okay. I just think the switching, because we've got the a switching with Zoom that's not working so good. But apart from that, it seems to be working fine. Mm, yeah, so yeah, it's good. Uh, what else, Joe? What else have you been uh, rummaging around in? Well, we'll I've got this this thing on uh, Google Plus will be shutting down four months earlier than what it should be because it's um, Google's discovered a second bug in their systems. So apparently on Monday... Uh, Google announced that it would be shutting down Google Plus four months earlier after a bug was discovered in their systems. The company said 52.5 million users were affected by an issue which exposed information including names, email addresses, occupations, and ages. Uh, Google Plus was set to be shut down in April 2019. The company was originally, sorry, the Google Plus is set to be shut down in April 2019, where the original plan date was to shut it down in August 2019. Yeah, look, I think I'd set up a Google Plus because that was the the in thing to do, wasn't it? To make sure your search engine optimization was up to up to scratch. But yeah, I don't know if it, any it didn't take off. It was supposed to be a Facebook no, it, killer. It didn't take off, but it was popular for people who didn't like using Facebook. So they all went across to Google Plus. Um, Oh, look, I, ha- I had a Google Plus account. I still have a Google Plus account mm. um, for Joe the Gadget Man. But, um, yeah, apparently that's going to be shut down. They're saying here that um, anyone who's using the APIs for, uh, to produce stuff um, will also be – they will they will be removing – they will cut off the API access within the next 90 days. Yeah, right. Well, I don't think it's too much of a loss, but um, I thought that was Rex Moss up there. That's not – <laughs> I just looked at my, <laughs> I just looked at my profile, and look, there's nothing updated for about two years, uh, which you know, which I, it's right because I didn't update anything, but um, yeah, it was I don't know, it just didn't seem as good as Facebook. There was maybe too little on the screen. There was too little to be looking at and touching and poking at. Uh, you know, there's a fair bit to do on Facebook, probably too much, some would say, but yeah, that'd be I'm no great loss, I don't think. Might go the way same way as MySpace or further. I think Google Plus is going further. Um, what is MySpace doing these days? Oh, I don't know. I haven't seen or used that for for years. I don't even know if it's still working or not. Didn't some singer Timberlake or something buy it? Or something? Oh, I heard. I heard that he did buy it. Yeah, I don't know if he still got it. I see yeah. if it's still. Oh, yeah, it's still kicking on. So, okay, just one last thing before we move on to the next subject uh, with this Google Plus. If you are using it. Um, it's a good idea to start downloading any data that you want off it uh, right away. There is a link that you can use. It's um, takeout.google.com. Right. So basically, you log into https colon forward slash forward slash takeout.google.com. You log in and you select the data that you want to download and keep. Um, and then you just follow the directions to download it and store it onto your own computer. Because once they turn it off, I don't think you can get it anymore. Yeah, so there you go. Your account, your data, export a copy. There you go. Select the data to include. Choose the Google products to include in your archive. Configure the settings for each product. The archive will only be accessible by you. Then you go down and click which ones you want to export. Geez, there's a lot of them, isn't there? There's a lot of things in there. And people who actually use them, it, you know, it might be a good idea, even if you don't use Google Plus, to go in there and have a look. Mm. To um, to take out google.com because you never know um, what can be you know taken down. So go in there, have a look, and download the information. I remember Google Groups. God, they were they were awful too. But yeah, <laughs> it's heaps oh, of. Yeah, they took Google Groups down too. I used to like Google Groups. There was another one. What was that Notepad we used to use? I, we used to use it for the show oh, years ago. Now was it just Google Notepad? Probably 
that's probably gone. That's gone the way of the dodo as well. It's probably not uh, any. They don't. They don't call it no cap, notepad anymore. I think they call it um keep, keep. Google Keep. Yeah, they keep. But it was. It's yeah. Like it's a little bit the same, isn't it? But that notepad was pretty good. But yeah. But yeah. anyway, that's um. Yeah. Okay. That's a good tip there, Joe. So where was that? That was takeout.google.com. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Good stuff. All right. Let's see. Where are we going? Oh, let me just scroll all the way up here, and we'll talk about. Oh, Evelyn Berezin. Now, you'd never know who she was, but she has died at the age of 93. Now, she was the woman who created and sold what you may recognize, or what many people would recognize, as the world's first word processor. So, Evelyn called the device the data secretary. Now, so I'm good at getting these pages up when you talk, Joe, but I'm going to try and get this page up so we can have a picture of old Evelyn as we talk. And uh, for those on YouTube who like to look at pictures, there, there's, there she is right there. So what is that sort of, what is it? Is it a, some sort of like a, is it a software or is it a program or what is it that they're yeah. trying to, that she just, that she um, discovered? Yeah, well, she created the world's first word processor as such. So she called the device the data secretary in 1971 uh, with her company Redactron. They launched the product. She grew Redactron from nine employees to over 500, and which became one of the U.S. top leaders by Business Week magazine in the year she sold it in 1976. Uh, old Evelyn helped pioneer other types of special purpose computing, including an automated banking system, a weapons targeting calculator for the U.S. Department of Defense, and terminals for a horse track terminals for a horse track that monitored how much money was being bet on each arrival. So one of the main, one of the remaining data secretary word processors can be seen on display at the California History Museum in California. Now the original model uh, lacked a monitor, but later versions of the data secretary included a screen. So how it worked was uh, the machine stood about one meter tall. It featured a keyboard a cassette drive, a couple of cassette drives, and a control, a control electronics and printer. So the way I, I'm guessing that this thing worked is you typed into it your original document, and which was recorded somehow onto the tape, and then you could put the tape, or then you could just have it reprint, you know, without you actually retyping. So I guess uh, it. it it was built to be, you know, you could record and play back what the user had typed, allowing it to be edited or reprinted. So I guess maybe, you know, you could uh, get to a stage in the tape where you wanted to edit it something and you just retype something else. And, uh, yeah, it would have been hard, laborious work by the sounds of it on cassette tape. But, yeah, that's how things start. They start off pretty hard and laborious, don't they? Well, I remember back then when those um, word processing programs, there was a program called WordPerfect or something like that. That was my very first experience using um, some sort of a document program running the old old uh, like green scale monitors. and. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the, I remember the WordPerfect, that would have been, geez, that would have been late 80s, wouldn't it? Or mid to late 80s. Okay, was... so this was a lot, lot sooner than then, was it? Yeah, this is in the 70s, 1971. Oh, yeah, and old Evelyn was around. Well, it didn't have a monitor, so <laughs> pretty hard. Um, yeah, but Word Perfect, that's right. The old blue screen, Word Perfect. But yeah. Um, all right, what else have you got, Joe? I have something interesting here. Now, I don't know whether it's going to take off or not, but apparently this Chinese company um, called Linkshore hopes to deliver free internet access worldwide using the satellite internet by 2026. Oh, imagine how much data they could suck up then. Yeah, but it's using satellite internet. I don't know how the good that's going to be. Mm. But anyway, apparently, apparently this Chinese company, um, it's called... Um, where, 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 I lost my spot here. Okay, the Chinese internet technology company has announced a plan to provide free satellite internet access worldwide by 2026, uh, joining companies like SpaceX, Facebook and Google in the mission to run a global internet service. Now the company, here it is, it's called Shanghai-based company Linkshore Network, says its mission is to bridge the world's digital inequalities. Unveiled on Tuesday, the first satellite in their ambitious plan to ensure that everyone in the world can access internet for free. Oh, that's all right then. So they sent up their first satellite 
Um, they called it the Link Shore Number One. Um, apparently, they're thinking of setting up, sending up about 272 satellites um, around the world in different spaces, in different orbits and heights, and um, to grab the whole globe area. Uh, yeah, the right. Whole global area. Yeah. Well, that's all right. Anything. So, but what? Wh why are they doing it for free? Yeah, this so, is this is what they don't say, though. I'm I'm guessing there's some something behind it. Um, yeah, there there must be. Like you know, uh, everyone goes, oh yeah, you can go and uh, Google search for free, but you really can't. It's um, you know, they they get you through the data collection while you're there. And yeah, they, they reckon that another further ten satellites will be sent up into orbit by 2020. By the end of 2020, right? And the company says that it's currently serving serving services to more than 900 million users across 223 countries. Right. Wow. Um, through an app that they call Wi-Fi Master Key. Hmm. I've never heard of that Wi-Fi Master Key. Nah, that's probably just all up in the northern hemisphere somewhere. But there, but there's a picture there. It looks like they want to go global. Yeah, I mean, they look pretty. They look pretty cool. They look like a, a normal satellite. Mm. Um, the um, apparently that this new Wi-Fi master key allows users to connect to certain Wi-Fi hotspots without the use of an individual login. So, and the idea is that this. Will be able to walk into the streets, and you once you've got access to it, you can actually log in all all over the world. Um, and it's meant to reach and at places where there's currently got no service. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's all right. That's good. Uh, some Not people in China are saying, um, once the news went viral, that um, does it mean that uh, social media sites like Weibo um, are going to be asking? Uh, uh, what's say? Oh, are they going to say? Uh, are they still going to be censored? Like the, oh, okay. uh, they're going to be censored or not? They're asking whether they can use Twitter and and these sort of things. So it'll be interesting to see how how that pans out. I reckon. Yeah, yeah. Is it, it's going to be a separate internet access, separate company running it without any restrictions as 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 we know them today for people who are who are using the internet in China. I reckon they'll be re they were restricted in China, but everywhere else, but they'll be unrestricted. They want to know what's going on in the world, so it'll be all unrestricted. You watch, but look further down to that story. I don't know if you did you keep reading on that story with the. the I did see I did see there the note the story about the um the moon that they want to yeah. you know, bring into space. But yeah, you go ahead, you tell them. Oh, I just I just saw it at the at the bottom there. I was just going to read it out. I like it says uh. The Linkshore plan combines China's growing interest and expansion in satellite technology, including including the announcement last month of a plan to launch satellites to act as artificial moons that could uh, replace city streetlights by 2020. How cool is that? Eh? They throw up they throw up these things into the into the um, into the space there, and um, it's going to light up the city. Mm. At night time, not really bright, but enough to to give you access to um to the to see what's happening in the street. Yeah, yeah. So that's um. Oh, well, they're trying to they're creating islands and everything, aren't they? The Chinese, they're doing everything. Um, yeah. So it's yeah. Beijing has also made moves to increase global digital connect connectivity, looking to create a digital Silk Road as part of its controversial One Belt One Road initiative. The Digital Silk Road plan is is designed to help Beijing export a digital economic infrastructure that will allow China's technological prowess to go global. Uh, China, their ambitions have raised concerns. Uh, earlier this year, Canberra opted to sign its own deal to provide undersea internet cable to the Solomon Islands, preventing Chinese mobile telecommunications Huawei. So it seems that, as we have mentioned before, it looks like the American and uh, Australian governments, at least, they're pretty concerned about what the Chinese operated Huawei is up to and um, yeah they're not having a bar of it all right uh, look I've, uh, I've got a little story about uh, just sort of on the same sort of stuff about Google's and all this sort of thing you would have heard we've spoke about this little site before DuckDuckGo uh, you heard of that one Joe oh yeah I use it a few times it doesn't give you as many results as Google but at least it you know it, it supposedly remains anonymous. They don't call any particular 
data up. They don't save any data from your searches. Yeah, that's right. They don't create any user accounts or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, so cementing its powerful no monopoly on the duck-related online content, the privacy-focused search engine, which is the DuckDuckGo, is now the, uh, the owner of Duck.com. Previously, Duck.com was owned by Google. So apparently Google come across it after they after they bought another company uh, in 2009 called Purchased On Two. So they, this company specialised in video bandwidth uh, reduction. On Two was previously known as the Duck Corporation and owned the Duck name. So what happened was, and even so, Google sort of pretty much dispensed with the the Duck sort of. Uh, way of calling things and so the duck.com redirected to the google.com just do a normal search so the guys at duckduckgo they asked google if they would if they wouldn't mind you know turning off the uh, the redirection you know because people were getting confused and he said well while you're at it um do you want to sell the duck.com uh to us and google uh, actually, sell might be the wrong word because it doesn't say how much, if there was any money changed hands. But anyway, the duck.com did change hands for whatever reason. And uh, and now the DuckDuckGo own that as well. So there you go. There's a little, bring you up to date with some duck stories. Um, yeah, so duck, I'll show you DuckDuckGo if you want to have a look at DuckDuckGo. Yeah. Uh, DuckDuckGo. Well, we can do an, we can do a uh, example. Let's try... Hang on, we'll get into it. Duck, duck, go. Let's let's search for something. Let's search for. Uh, let's search for Holden Monaro. Monaro, and see what comes up. Okay, so we get the cars guide. We get the Wikipedia entry. Okay, so yeah, that's a bit of a a lot of results about what is the Holden Monaro. So let's go to Google.com. Holden Monaro. Let's see how we go here. Oh yeah, Wikipedia, car sales. Sort of the same, not too bad. Car sales, car sales guide, motoring. Back to Duck Duck. Yeah, that's not too bad, I suppose. Yeah, but you're right, you can't beat Google for the, the for search results. Uh, now, arcade games. You're into arcade games, Joe, you'd be a you like all the old I, stuff? I'm into some of the older ones, but not so much of the new ones, yeah. Yeah, well, the, there's an arcade revival invades online space auction. Now, this auction, let me see if I can pull up the... Oh, oh sorry, I thought I had the link for that. But it's an online auction. It's a Lloyd's online auction. And it's uh, here on the Gold Coast at Carrara. So if you're a collector, investor, or gamer interested in, uh, you know, all these old games... There's over 50 pinball and arcade machines up for auction, and it's happening. Oh, it's already happened. Bad luck. <laughs> I only saw this the other day. It was November 24th. Bad luck, you've missed it. But anyway, I'm sure it was good. Uh, iconic games included the uh, Pinball, Space Invaders, Donkey Kong, Galaga, Pac Man, Scrambler, and many more. Are they sure that was then? Because that was only. I'm sure I got notified. I, I saw that in the in the newspaper, just like three days ago oh, I'm going to have a look here that can't be right can it can it Joe is this right arcade oh, no. a friend of mine's got one of those arcade machines and it's got like built in six games it's come like original like that with a, a board that plays six games it's got um, what is it Galaga um, Space Invaders uh, what's the other one um Oh, geez, I can't think oh of there's one. heaps of them. Yeah, you can get them for like... Puck Man. It's got Puckman and it's got a variation of some others as well. Yeah. And um, we were there a few weeks ago and he's turned this machine on and all these kids come around the machine and they're saying, oh, what's this, what's this? Mm. And it's like, oh, it's, it's a game. And so we start playing it. Oh, we want to go, we want to go. They couldn't get anywhere near how good we were playing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they had no idea. Yeah, and we good. were smashing them, you know, level after level after level. Mm. And uh, these kids, they could get nowhere near it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, what's what sort of games are you playing? Well, I like playing Galaga, right? Oh, Galaga yeah. With, with the double with the double shooter and all that. What's your high score? That's one of my favourites. Uh look, 
at the it was like twenty three thousand over over at that place a couple of weeks ago. But I haven't been paying it for a long time. But the kids couldn't even get half that. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's a good game. Um, Gallagher, Galaga, whatever you want to call it, Galaxian. Uh, what yeah, else is what, there? What was what was the, um, the other one? Asteroids was the other one I think you had there. But the, that was another good one. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. Asteroids. Oh, there's so many of the old ones. But anyway, because that leads me into another one, <laughs> another story. Hopefully, this one's in. The, hopefully, these people haven't closed shop by the time I read this one out. But the largest pinball parlor in Australia. How's this? And this is at Tweed Eds. It's all going on. I haven't been down there uh, yet. It only must have just opened. But let me let me let me give you a. Uh, Oh, how can I link in there when the SSL takes up all the URL space? There we go. Let's have a look here. It's only a Facebook page for these guys, but it's the Benny's Pinball Bar. So there you go. It's a pub as well. So how, how much better can you get th get there? Beers and pinball. Uh, the, the games range from 1950 to their new batch of machines. All styles of game uh, are available. Uh, electromechanical pinballs, the solid state pinballs, uh, historic shooting target machines, 60s driving machines. That'd be interesting to have a look at. Uh, they all apparently were purchased straight out of Coney Island at Luna Park. Uh, also, brand new Stearns on offer. I'm not sure what Stearns are. They must be some brand, is it, of game or something. Uh, the collection covers all periods, even a totally restored Kiss machine. So there we go. So there's their little Facebook page. Oh, what happened there? Yeah, so you know, apparently... I don't have the room to have one of these. I mean, I'd love to have a couple of these and, you know, a couple of the old machines at yeah. home and, and a snooker table. You've just got to have the room to have one of these things. You've got a dedicated man cave, I reckon. I had a, I've had, I had a pinball machine for years uh, and I only recently probably sold it. It was a Vector. It was called Vector. Uh, but, you know, that they're good while they're going. And then when they don't go, uh, they're expensive. You've got to find someone that knows that what they're doing to fix them up um yeah parts are expensive yeah so it sat idle for a long time and uh, i think some collector in canberra they wanted it and so they bought it and uh they organized its transportation and everything but yeah but you know they're good while they're working yeah they're great i like it <laughs> i think uh, my brother's got a couple of electro magnet mag electro mechanical ones he's got two of those they're noisy little things and what oh he used to have a space invaders you know those real wide ones the real wide pinny yeah so it was all good yeah they're good good value but these are uh, benny's pinball bar apparently they have competitions and everything so it's uh if you need tweet ads go down and check them out uh what's their what's their facebook i'll tell you what their facebook is if you're on the if you're interested uh, i haven't got enough space anyway google it because it's too much it's numbers and letters so google it it's uh benny's pinball bar i'm sure you'll find it all right, um, Joe. Have you got any more? I don't have any more, but there wasn't much as far as you know worthwhile news telling people these weeks. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of garbage out there. Oh, that's right. Uh, a lot of holidays. Yeah, there are a whole lot of um, you know the, the five top this and five mm. top that's and uh, great Christmas ideas and there's a whole heap of stories like that, which you know nine times out of ten our listeners probably heard about them. What what I like to bring. To, to the listeners is, is things that you don't normally see or don't normally hear about so that way they can be informed of things that are not normally you know, you know yeah. heard of on, 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 on normal news yeah that's right and that's what I try and do as well I try and get into the more if I can find interesting Australian stories yeah we'll, we'll pull, pull those in but the last thing I've got for this uh, week is just a rumour pretty much and also a part of, apart from that uh, Chris on Facebook said he's made up the road has got a 1992 Doctor Who pinball machine I remember that one. Uh, I, hey, Chris, don't tell Glenn that. He's a really big Doctor Who fan. Yeah, I, I know exactly that machine that you're talking about. I think it's uh, Sylvester McCoy, the seventh Doctor machine. And, uh, yeah, I remember playing that up at what used to be Grundy's. Yeah, I remember playing that machine. I was all I was all excited when I knew one of those was coming out, going through the time warps and... <laughs> all right. Um, Apple. This is a rumor. I don't normally do rumors. I, I pulled this story in thinking, oh, yeah, something to talk about. And then it, it started going on. People familiar with the company said, and I thought, oh, bugger that. That's just a rumor. But I'll put it in and it's got, it'll, it'll fill two minutes. Uh, Apple will wait until 2020 to release their 5G iPhone. So um, that's all. That's, that's it. <laughs> that's the whole rumor. <laughs> it did go on, but you know I don't like uh, I don't I don't know I don't just like I don't care about rumors. I eh? I just, just tell me the facts. Wait till they come on. Wait till they come out. 
But yeah, apart from that, I'm out of I'm out of stuff as well. There wasn't too much going on through the week. So um, yeah, that's about that's about it. Uh, Jordan, yeah, as you know, he's not here. He's gone off on a he's he's singing tonight. So um, I hope he sings horses for us. That'd be nice. Well, for the crowd that he's singing to anyway. But um, but yeah. So Christmas is nearly here, Joe. What are you? Any, are you up to anything exciting for Christmas? Going away or anything? Are we going to see you next week or or what? Uh, yeah, I should be here next week. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not going away for Christmas. Um, I, I should be, uh, or maybe one week after the New Year, I might go. Uh, I've got a party booked with the jukebox, nice. which, um, which I'm going to be doing on the fourth. Oh uh, yeah. For somebody, so it's a wedding that I'm going to be uh, performing there with the jukebox. So. Um, are you automating it as much as the last one, or are you going to be pretty much more hands on? Like, no, this one here will be pretty much more hands-on. Uh, you know, you got to. I'm going to speak to the the couple that are getting married and going to, you know, see what type of songs they want mm. and um, you know, organize the music for them. Yeah, know, dinner music and organize uh, dance music and so forth. Yeah, nice, good stuff. Uh, I was just looking at the dates just then, so I think uh, possibly that Thursday in between Christmas and New Year's, I think that might be a bit of a write-off. Um, uh, it probably will be for me anyway. <laughs> so I, I don't know what about you guys, but we can discuss all that later. But I think yeah. that week it might be a might have that week off, the the Christmas week, uh, if nothing. Else, if you guys, yeah, I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy to yeah. do that. I mean, you can have a bit of a break, stay with the family, and so forth. Yeah, that's exactly right, isn't it? That's exactly right. There's not too many show uh, stories going on or going around that sort of time anyway. Uh, if there's anything ex- super exciting, I I I do a special episode, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, there's nothing too exciting. Uh, cool. If you've got anything you want to tell us, uh, email us, glennjoejordan at aussietechheads.com.au. As I said, you catch us on the Facebook. Uh, you can catch us on the YouTube. Uh, thanks so much to our our uh, sponsors, which is the startnewcompany.com.au and athwebhosting.com.au. It all pays the bills. And uh, there's plenty of them. And, well, they help try to pay the bills at least anyway. So, yeah, so uh, that's good. Uh, all right, lovely. So we might end it there for this week, and uh, yeah, take it, bring it up again next week, Joe. Right, Glenn. Yep, I'll catch up with you next week. And um, as, as we go offline, I can hear the thunder here. I don't know if anyone's in Sydney, but it's just about to piss down. Good. And it's, and it's uh, thundering really hard at the moment where I am. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, we're looking at going on a little bit of a boat ride up the coast, like way up the coast, and I think there's cyclones happening. So. Uh, Maybe we change our minds. I don't know. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, Joe. We might see you uh, next week. That'd be great. Yep. All right. We'll see you then. Th- right. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in, watching us on the YouTube yeah. or wherever. And uh, Facebook Live seemed to be half a success. So thanks for guys on the live stream. All right. Mm-hmm. Until next week, it's bye for now. Cheers. Bye bye. Yeah. All right. So see you later, Facebook. We'll see you next week. Yeah.